Good morning. You were ready to say good morning before you took a sip. That's why I laughed. That's why I giggled, giggle, chuckle, giggle, chuckle. Mm -mm -mm. Good morning and happy Tuesday. It is Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Today is the 13th of April. And Sarit's birthday is in one month and one day. Mm hmm Yep. Wow, today's Q&A day, guys. We're so happy to see you here. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Thank you for blessing us with your presence. We are excited to answer your questions. Shall we get to it? <sighs> we shall. All right. First question comes from... A Jenna Boucher from Portland, Oregon. That's where I grew up. All right. Dang, Southeast, what? We're, we're getting to some fun questions. Now that um, it's becoming a thing that we're starting to teach more about entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship. So this we're going to be talking about six questions in one. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to read the questions and then I'm going to um, give you guys a disclosure and then we're going to get to the answer. Okay. Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency. Who is it really for? What value does it add to financial health? When is a good time to invest if it's worth the time and effort? Or where could it be used wisely? Why or why not should I even bother? Like Empire Records tell us, damn the man. All right, you guys, so just so you guys know, if you don't know this by now, we are 10X coaches and Grand Cardone licensees. If you don't know, now when you it, know. When it comes to anything money and business, okay, we are literally going to be telling you everything that he teaches us because that is our duty and obligation. If you are taking notes, you should write down some rules. The only reason why I feel qualified to even answer this is because I'm learning from one of the smartest people on this planet with anything with regards to money, marketing, and sales, okay? This is why I feel confident. Other than that, I do not feel confident because, like had it not been for that, I wouldn't have been feeling confident because this is what Grant always tells us. When it comes to money, don't take advice from a millionaire. Unless somebody has made an extreme amount of wealth, they don't know how to play the game yet. However, because we are learning from the man who's not a millionaire, he's a multi-billionaire, who's proven, has a proven track record of decades and decades of success. I feel confident sharing with you these answers because this is what he shares with us. Okay, so please do know that. Because one of the biggest problems, and we were just at a boot camp with him um, this week, and one of the biggest financial problems is that we learn most of our money information from our parents. Or from people who are struggling with money themselves. Yeah. So it's, it's one of those, take advice from somebody who's not in a position you want to be in. It's up to you. Um, yeah. Okay. So yeah, the, re the reason that we are licensees is because we believe in this information. We believe in this information. It has a proven track record to be effective. So, you know, if you are looking to create wealth, which is not a bad thing. So for the people who want to like taboo on the topic of like, oh, you like, why do you want so much money? Everybody has a different intention and reason for wanting what they want, no matter what it is. So um, when it comes to any kind of investment, the first rule is don't lose money. If you don't know the game and there's a lot of potential for you to lose money, don't play the game until you know the game. And when it comes to investments, here is how it goes. And here's why most people lose the game of investments. It's because they skip the, ske the steps. Step number one is invest in yourself. Invest in yourself so that you can generate income for yourself throughout any situation at exponential amounts, okay? 
So when it comes to money, and we've talked about it in one of our episodes, you have to learn how to get it, how to keep it, and how to multiply it. The multiplier is the investment part. But before that, you have to master learning how to get it through sales, not just a salary. That is because then you have a cap. How to keep it, some financial discipline so that you can, you can have enough money stored, have it grow to a number substantial enough that when you dump a bunch of it into investments, it's not even going to, like, you're not even going to blink an eye. Okay? So, can we go back to her question real quick? Mm-hmm. So... When it comes to cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, who is it really for? The answer is it's for everybody. The question is, um, you know, is that what you choose to invest in? When you get to a state that you can now be an investor based on grand standards, okay? First, you have to learn how to get it in amounts that are significant enough, have stored significant amounts, so that you can invest a shit ton and not even blink an eye, okay? That, that takes a lot of time, a lot of years, a couple decades, as a matter of fact. Most people jump into investments, oh, I'm going to invest $100 here, $100 there. That's not going to change your life. The whole point of going from, from one quadrant, and this is what Rich Dad, Poor Dad, uh, Rob Kiyosaki talks about, there's the four quadrants, right? To, to get to the quadrant of investor, you have had to have already accumulate a, a significant amount of money and have stored a significant amount of money. Whether you are an entrepreneur and you own your own business or you're an entrepreneur, you're working for a business that's a reliable vehicle that has a track record that's going to continuously grow throughout the years. Okay? So... I would say it's for anybody who knows the game of cryptocurrency that has a substantial amount of money. When we were at GrowthCon, we sat next to a couple that has over $100 million um, invested in crypto. They're all about the crypto game. Grant says, crypto is unreliable. Here's why, because it's man-made. Now, here's the thing and why crypto is becoming this um, like hot topic. You guys, the... What is it? Three trillion dollars were give were given out. Like fifty percent of the new money that's circulating on the planet was printed out last year. Three trillion dollars, an extreme amount. So now, what happens with that? Every time, like you hear that, you know, like the president is gonna dump, you know, trillions of dollars to, um, to to Americans, basically what happens is inflation down the road. And that's what people don't realize. 600 bucks or 1200 bucks for millions of people, that means a decade from now or not even, like you you guys are gonna see this. Rents are gonna keep on going up because the value of the dollar is getting lower. So basically what's happening right now is that we are trending to have an extreme amount of inflation. Inflation is already happening. For anybody who does foreign exchange, you will see that the value of the dollar is lowering. It's happening and it's only going to continue happening because of everything that happened over the last year, okay? That yeah, being like- said, the value of everything else increases because the value of the dollar decreases. Well, your dollar buys less than it used to. Right. That's it. Like if you make a thousand bucks a month, then your thousand dollars will buy less stuff. Yeah. And that is why it is so important that you guys learn how to go get money and and have financial discipline so that you know how to keep it. But don't just focus on keeping, keeping, keeping because if you don't invest in yourself, you're never gonna learn the the tools and skills necessary in order to generate more money. And that's where why most of society gets stuck. So um, what value does it add to financial health? According to Grant, it does not. He will tell you do not invest in that if when you become an investor because that is an unreliable... Hold on. He has... Okay, let me blanket this whole thing because he has 
cryptocurrency. Why though? He has a lot of passive income coming in that the next month it's going to come back. So it doesn't matter. Right. But the blanket statement is like, I just like to answer all of these questions. For one, if you're investing in learning how to play whatever investment game you want to play, you will have all of these questions answered. Number two is I wouldn't invest anything if you don't have money that you know is guaranteed to come back in that is going to, that if you were to lose it, you're still gonna be okay. Don't risk something you don't know you're gonna get more of. And that is exactly why Grant has some money in crypto, just just to fucking play. Because his his theory, and, and Rob Kiyosaki's is the same, by the way, and so is Sharon Lecter's, right? That that is not a reliable source because that is man-made. The track record just is a lot shorter than other things like real estate and paper uh, investments. Yeah. So. Um, so, but let's answer, when is it a good time to invest and is it worth the time and effort? It's worth the time and effort, absolutely, for anybody who has accumulated a substantial amount of money. And we're talking about like hundreds of thousands of dollars at the very least. Um, you know, like what, what Grant says is that you would want to start investing if you have accumulated at least a hundred thousand dollars saved up that's when you know that, that that's a sign that you can start getting into the investment game maybe but you have to you have to understand the investment game maybe depending on the situation we, that's what he right, did for maybe, jared maybe right. we have that much we're not investing yet we don't have that personally we are not our business. Right. That's different. Right. So what I'm saying though is like you may have it available to you, but in what form, from where, like is it actually yours? Right. Right. So it, it's, it's all, I, I, I just, I feel like the blanket answer answers all of these things. Learn the game. Don't invest until you have enough to where if you lose it, it's not going to matter. I love that. Next question. Great question, Jenna. Jenna, you've invested in the accelerator program. You've got a shit ton to learn and I'm so freaking stoked for you. Just keep on learning. Keep on going through Cardone. You keep showing up for the weekly calls because you're gaining the skills and tools necessary in order to allow you to down the road become an investor. Okay. Next question. Oh, is I like from that name. Is from Tree Archibek. <clears throat> I do not know how to say that last name. I like that name. It's unique. From Denver, Colorado. Classic. I feel like Colorado. It, it, it like wins. How do protein shakes and pre workouts and mostly post workout shakes impact? weight loss. I feel better, recover stronger when I drink a post-workout shake, it seems, after shock. However, it's like 250 calories. I just burned 300-ish calories. Now I'm consuming it back. How do Aaron and Sarit drink and consume pre and post-workout shakes? Do they? Thank you. This is a great question. You guys are killing it with the questions today. So let's talk. So let's. So let's talk about this one. the first. I want to take this one. You talked so much in the last one. <clears throat> I like. I like to talk about money. Is the mic on? All right. Great. Okay. Go. There's a lot of language in this that tells me there's so much confusion, which is why you're asking the question, and that's great. So, protein shakes pre or post simply means I drink it before or I drink it after. It could be the same shake, it just means before or after.
if you don't eat, you die. So you have to eat and everything you eat that will keep you alive has calories. So let's not be afraid of them. That's one. The next one is, what is the intention that you are hoping to get out of consuming said shake? The reasons why we would drink a shake would be either because we're really busy and have very limited time to get in some, some food or some calories. And so uh, something really quick just works best. Um, it's right after a workout and we haven't had anything to eat yet and we need something that is going to be absorbed into our system relatively quickly so that our body can start recovering. It's probably why you feel better. I don't know what aftershock means, um, like in your, the way that you're using this in the definition. Um, you're burning calories all day long. You walk to the bathroom to go take a poop, you're burning calories. So you don't have, like the only time you're burning calories is not just when you're exercising. You're just burning more because you've got an elevated heart rate, you've got more muscle uh, contraction going on, which requires more oxygen, which burns more calories um, because you're using energy. So um, uh, the fitness is a great part, but don't think that, you know, oh, if I've, you know, burned this many calories and I'm putting it back into my body that now you've like not done anything productive. I think that that's a, a trap that I know I fell into because I would just compare, okay, how many calories do I burn when I work out and how many am I eating per day? It's like, those are the only two things I would compare. Not realizing that I'm literally burning calories 24 hours a day, 24 hours a day. So, you know, it's, it isn't, and then you go how many hours without eating anything, right? If you drink your protein shake, maybe it's another couple hours before you consume food. Guess what? During those other couple of hours, you're still burning more calories. You have to fuel, you have to re-energize the thing that's putting out energy to move, to work, to, you know, play with your kids, to do exercise, to do, um, to uh, do yard work. You have to put calories is just a form of energy back in. So what I would focus on is what is the quality? First of all, what is the intention behind me having some kind of pre or post workout shake? Maybe you had lunch at, um, you know, 12 PM and you're going to work out at 5 PM, but you don't want to eat a big meal right before you work out. So you have a shake instead. Or the workout can come before and then the shake right after because dang, I'm really hungry now because I haven't eaten for a few hours. So it's like, what's the intention behind this? And then what's the quality of the protein that I'm consuming? Um, what are the ingredients that are in it? Is there a list of um, you know 30 ingredients that I can't pronounce? No matter what, any kind of protein shake powder that you consume is going to have probably a couple of things you can't pronounce. Um, it is all processed to some degree. Some are better qualities than others. If you've been in our community for a while, you know that we stand very much behind X Endurance brand. Um, the integrity that they have, the ingredients that they have, the nutritional contents that you're consuming when you're consuming that is great and there's always multiple products within one product so when you're consumed this is the x endurance lean protein with some almond milk we just finished working out and i know that i haven't eaten anything i need something right and i need something that's going to be absorbed quickly so that my body can feel like oh i'm going to be fed cool i don't need to hang on to everything i've eaten and store it somewhere because I know I'm gonna be fed as a trust thing. And so when you're consuming an X endurance one, not only is there like good quality protein, but there's also uh, branched chain amino acids, which people normally buy separately. 
And there's lactate, which is uh, your body's natural fuel source. It's a natural fuel source that we make, but we use it so quickly that we just can't make it as fast as, it's, as we use it. It's not possible. So they put that in here as like an extra natural energy. So you're getting always multiple things. I will always recommend X Endurance. Um, there is a collagen version with greens. There's the lean for people who would prefer a plant-based protein. Um, and then there's two different kinds of the whey protein that have whey and casein. It's four different super grade proteins in there with BCAAs and lactate. So like for me, that's a no brainer. If you need something that's quick, something that's effective, something that's gonna get the job done, um, I definitely recommend them, but I don't think that I would ever require it. Just depends on what your lifestyle is. Okay, I'm done. You go. Great stuff. So, three for one, if you're serious about your goals, I don't know what they are, do us a favor and please email admin at erinandsuri.com. I can already tell that there's just so much like misinformation just from seeing like your language and concerns. Um, you know, the first and biggest gap that I'm noticing here, which tells me everything I need to know about your mindset, is uh, you said it, that the, the shake is like 250 calories and you just burned 300 calories. That tells me that you take weight loss as in, in the most basic term, um, which is so old school, is not um, efficient and definitely not sustainable. And that is the method of a caloric deficit. There's so much more that goes to weight loss than just a caloric deficit. So basically what it sounds like you're concerned about is the fact that you're not gonna be in as great of a caloric deficit. Mm -hmm. However, I saw that somebody dropped in the comments that Aftershock is the brand of protein that you use. Um, I wanna look into it, but I can already tell you- They just already commented there's 17 grams of sugar. Yeah, like the protein, like what I would be more concerned about is not the calories in it, but the amount of sugar that you're consuming. Um, and I'm saying it to you with love, but the, pro the protein that you're consuming, if it's got 17 grams of sugar, um, definitely not in alignment with your goals. And just by looking at the package too, I can tell that it's just shit. It is shit protein. Um, I will make like a very generalized statement that pretty much anything, most, I would say 95% of what you will buy in a GNC or a vitamin shop is very, very mass produced. And a lot of it is the same exact um, uh, formula and different companies just buy the rights to put their label on it. Yeah. So that's why it's so cheap. Oh, but I can get five pounds for 50 bucks. I'm like, yeah. And your $50 goes straight into the toilet. And jacks up your insulin level. Like that, yeah, it's like 50 bucks up front, but it could be thousands of dollars the way down the line. Um, okay, so that is so that is my first um, point. That the fact that you see weight loss as a caloric deficit when there is so much more that goes into it. You guys, what weight loss basically means, it means that your metabolism is becoming more optimized. That's all there is. If you just think of it in terms of calories in, calories out, this is why most girls who go for bikini shows or whatnot end up just ballooning back and forth because they don't think about the entire 360 that goes with weight loss. They just think that if I'm in an extreme caloric deficit, I'm going to lose weight. So if I'm not in an extreme caloric deficit, I'm gonna gain weight. And that's how you become scared of food. That's how you become um, obsessed with cardio. That is how you slow down the process of building your muscle, which is the most important um, tool in order to help you increase and optimize your metabolism long term. And that's how some people, not all people, that's how some people end up with things like PCOS when it wasn't going to happen initially. Yep. And that's how a lot of people end up with hypothyroidism and even like things like Hashimoto's. And, a, and how about all the like, you know, just mental chaos? We used to be those people. When I used to follow that route, 
I used to struggle for 10 years from the ages of 14 to 24. We're just extremely lucky that we were exposed that that was something that was dangerous to us at a younger age. Yeah, we've, we've done it all. We've seen it all. So, um, you know, love that you were asking that question because that is true. All it is, is an opportunity for you to get better. And if you're really serious about, you know, um, losing weight and, and getting to your goals, I don't know what they are. We know that we can absolutely help you. Um, but it sounds as if, you know, like your, um, current belief system and what, and, and the information that you know is basically what mainstream media teaches. And we know that what we teach is extremely disruptive. It is very different. And it is, you know, I know that a lot of you were skeptical when you very first came to our community. In fact, I would love it if you can drop it in the comments. When you first came to us, you're like, wow, what they teach is different. Like I'm kind of intrigued by it, but how does that make any sense? please go ahead and drop that in the comments because we know that we're very disruptive, but we know we have the answer and that's why we're on a mission to transform the lives of millions because we used to be sucked into this misinformation too and having found the answer, we know that we'll be extremely disservicing each and every one of you guys if we don't do our part. So, um... You already talked about the intention of drinking post-workouts. Um, now, if you're drinking post-workouts, I would highly recommend just with anything else that you do, um, put in your body that you go for the best. Mm -hmm. um, and I can already tell you that Aftershock, you're, you're basically just putting some powdered candy with enhanced protein um, and just by looking at what that aftershock is. Yeah, aftershock it is, is... It is very low quality protein. I don't even know how much of that gets absorbed. Um, it's like a protein Snickers bar. Yes, yes. Feel free to toss it out. Um, however, let's talk about today's workout, for example. And, you know, I was thinking after I finished today's workout, I was like, um, we should probably do an episode on this because... For anybody who has no training background, and there is a reason why we take you guys from um, the rise above to four levels of the burn zone before you even enter the UTC, because there's no way in hell that somebody who just starts to work out for one will be able to understand a workout like today's and to be able to execute a workout like today's the way it's supposed to be executed. So today's workout took you 2.52? Two minutes and 53 seconds. Two minutes and 53 seconds. I That's know, the length of my workout. I guarantee Done. That, I, gu I guarantee that most of you guys are like, wait, but she probably burnt only 30 calories in it. Like, how how is that even possible? This is a good I'm good I'm point. not even remotely as close of an athlete, as, as good of an athlete as Erin is. So my time was 4.16. Four minutes. And here's the thing, you guys, we have different energy systems in our body and we'll shed more light on it on a completely different topic. But, you know, when you're just thinking calories in, calories out, you're only focusing on one energy system. And if you are just focusing on, on training one energy system your entire life, then if you think about your whole being as a, as a functional human and as physical preparedness, um, general physical preparedness and the training world, we call it GPP, um, you're extremely disservicing yourself, okay? So when it comes to training, there's so much more than calories and that is why, uh, sorry, there's so much more than just, when it comes to training, there's so much more than just focusing on how many calories you've burned mm. because... During. During. Because if that is the case, for one, you're focusing on an extremely inefficient form of training. We all have to start somewhere. So fine, I get it. Um, but, you know, a caloric deficit happens in so many forms. So here's how we, we reach a caloric deficit. From one, through movement. You know, whether you go, you walk your dog or whether you do grace for less than three minutes, which incorporates a completely other energy system. And yes, maybe Erin burnt like only 30 calories during it. But guess what? Her, she's going to be burning probably 10 times more for every hour for the rest of the day today because of the intensity 
that she put into her workout. How okay. would you like to be burning multiple times the amount of calories by just sitting your ass in a chair? So, so this is one way that we can achieve a caloric deficit through movement. Okay. And there is, when it comes to training, we can achieve that in more than one way. Um, yes, during, but also if you're looking at more, um, efficient forms of training, and this is what the UTC is all about, you're going to be burning a lot more after. By the way, if you're in the UTC, do us a favor and um, drop a flex emoji. You and if you're to scared see. of today's workout, if you're in the UTC and you're afraid of today's workout, I was too. Sarit, oh, yeah, Sarit so didn't that. even want to start. I had to be like, are you ready? And she was just standing there thinking about it. Some of these are just mentally, you're just like scared. And then you do it and you're like, okay, well, all right, <laughs> I did it. You know, and, and I had to just press the button. Like, you got 10 seconds, let's go. But to Sarit's point... Um, if you look at, and just to give you a visual, if you look at a long distance runner, uh, like a photo of a, of a long distance runner, and you look at a photo of a sprinter, two different athletes, both runners, they look extremely different. Their bodies are extremely different. And it's because they're using predominantly different types of energy systems. UTC is the Underground Training Club. Brittany Burns. I believe you're on Burn Zone 4. It would come after that. Um, but, you know, each system that you, is necessary to utilize. So there are some days we'll go for a four-mile run. There are some days where we will do more strength. Um, and then we'll do a really, really intense but a lot shorter workout and they have they have different different effects on the body yeah and also that is why like you can't just enter the underground training club you have to qualify for it because if you've never worked out in your life and you're like oh this looks cool i want to train like these girls but meanwhile like you can barely manage a heart rate at you know a hundred beats per minute there's no way in hell you're going to be able to do the UTC because these are highly complex, heavy-ish, um, slash heavy, um, highly skilled movements at a high intensity, right? So there's so much that goes into it. But back to, so weight loss is basically an improved me metabolism, like you get to continuously optimize your metabolism. Now it happens in multiple forms. Yes, it happens through movement, okay? And that is why, like you guys should do some form of movement every day. It doesn't have to be a workout every day, but you sh like our bodies were meant to move. Absolutely, this is why you have muscles, right? Um, now there is other ways that you can achieve weight loss. And this is where Erin and I come into play that this entire weight loss industry is completely like missing out on. It's not one or the other, it's all of the above. And those are nutrition. Did you guys know that yes, you can achieve improved metabolism, that yes, you can experience a caloric deficit from eating certain foods? Eat real foods, not too much, mostly plants is the name of the game. Like, no food will make you burn more calories. And I see some magazines say that sometimes. Blueberries will make you burn no, more calories. It, it's just like, you know, to the reader, it's like it grabs their attention. But basically what that means is that it's got more micronutrients, it's got a higher water content, therefore it helps to improve your metabolism. When your metabolism is improved, you get to burn more calories. Or it takes more energy to digest something than it does something else. Yes, calories, absolutely. Energy, calories. Like it, it does not take a lot of energy to break <laughs> down a Snickers bar, but it takes energy to break down kale. Because kale's more and that is why, less. and that is why you'll see on magazines that vegetables are negative calories. There's no such thing as negative calories. But yes, did you guys know that depending on the foods that you're eating, like it will take energy to more energy to break down certain foods versus others? 
Okay, so that is another way to achieve weight loss. And by the way, this is why people who are in our programs, let's say you get injured or let's say you get you have a surgery and you're like, ah, I don't know if I should sign up because I'm having a surgery and I won't be able to work out. I'm like, dude, I guarantee you that if you follow what we tell you, you're gonna lose weight post-surgery. If you've been one of those people, do us a favor, or, or like post injury, like Daisy, you're you're going through this right now. Stacey. Like if you're one of these people, Stacy, like drop it in the comments. Me, yeah. And the other one is stress levels, you guys. Managing stress levels. No, and this is something that nobody talks about because here's the thing: you can be so on point with your calories and your macros, but if your stress levels are not managed, and guess what, your cortisol levels are high, which means that your insulin levels are gonna be high, which means that your metabolism is gonna be fucked up. I don't even care how on point you are with your calories. And by the way, whenever you read labels on foods and it says, oh, 180 calories for blah blah blah, or when you go on your cardio machine and it says, oh, you just burned 250 calories. Know that these are never exact, that these are estimates. And that's why if you join any of our programs, we never tell you, oh, you should eat this and that amount of calories because it is all estimates. When and you, you have to ask yourself, estimates based off of what method? Right, based on an average generalization. And our standards are way higher than the average or the general public. For example, you go on the Stairmaster and it says you burned 200 calories in this workout based off of what? 200 pound male based on an algorithm based that, on a 250 pound female like yeah. like what where like if you weigh more you're gonna burn more energy because it costs more energy for you to hold up a heavier body imagine you put on a 20 pound weight vest it's not part of you for you jokesters out there who are like i got a 20 pound weight vest um but if you put on a 20 pound weight vest and you go for a walk, it's gonna be harder than if you didn't have the 20 pound weight vest on, which means you're gonna burn more calories. So the more you weigh, the more calories you burn. So what, what are those calories based off of that they're telling you you've burned? I'll never go off of things like that because you have no idea. This is why we say eat real food, not too much, mostly plants. Can't go wrong with that. What we teach is simple, but wrapping your mind around it is hard. <clears throat> it's disruptive because it, it, like, it's so different than everything that you've ever heard before. And the same goes for Grant with money, and this is why we study him. Because he's disruptive with regards to money. Because he teaches the exact opposite of what society tells you. And this is why he's successful and this is why he helps so many people to be successful. And this is why we're inspired by him to help you become successful. But back to your question with regards to that, there is so much that goes into weight loss. And you guys, like it has nothing to do with calories. Of however, if you're playing the game right, it has a little the, bit to do with calories. However, just hold on. However, if you're playing the game right by default, by default, you will be at a caloric deficit for the most part, or you will be at a caloric balance, which is what you guys should strive for. Um, so here's the thing. If, if you know that you, you're just so confused right now and you're like, man, I feel like you're speaking to my soul. Um, like, where do I go from here? Just shoot us an email. Go ahead and send admin at erinandsari.com an email saying, I want help. And just tell us what is your story, what is your goals. Let us learn a little bit about you so that we can start a conversation. Because if you feel like we're speaking to your soul right now, then I guarantee you that we have the answer that you need. We've been there before, you guys. And this is why like, we're so passionate about this mission because shame on us if we don't share it with more people calories matter but if that's all you're focused on you you will struggle you will if struggle. that's all you are focused on depending on how much weight you've got to lose you're only gonna lose the initial however much and, and then chances are you're gonna go back to where you were why because you become obsessed. Hmm. You become obsessed with counting numbers. 
Are you a math teacher? If you are, forget about these numbers. If you become obsessed with counting numbers, you always feel wrong if some kind of number goes too high or if some number is not high enough. And so then you feel bad about yourself. Ah, I ate too many calories today. But let's say like there's a reason that produce doesn't typically come with a nutrition label. Because it don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. And I want to say one more thing too. If, if you guys look at the, like the, the trends of, of the homo sapien, right? Like tens of, of thousands of years ago, there were no such thing as um, MyFitnessPal or all these things. They didn't know what calories were. But guess what? Everybody looked like a fucking beast. Because they moved intentionally every day. They had to. Was it, were they their really? body were their asset. If they could run faster, that means that they, they get to eat the deer. And catch more food. If they were fat, then they would die. Because they, won't, they, they would be chased by a lion and they wouldn't be able to, to get after, after the deer. But what I happens only- is that the more... The more advanced society got, the more you've, you've been told certain things. Oh, count this. Lower fat, lower sugar, blah, blah, blah. Why is it that like we are the most overweight that we've ever been? You guys, just think about that. Clearly, that means that what society is being told is wrong. Because it's all, like your byproduct, your life today is is a byproduct of everything that you've applied in your life until now. So if society is shitting the bed with regards to their metabolism overall, then guess what? That's because what we're told is absolute lies. The food industry just wants you to stay as a consumer. The FDA standards are way too low. In fact, the FDA standards are in there to help promote certain diseases why because the 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 um the most successful companies in the u.s are top uh, are big pharma diabetes medication um hypertension medication cholesterol medication have you ever heard of somebody going on oh sir you have high blood pressure did you ever hear about high blood pressure medication getting somebody off of high blood pressure medication? No, you're just a lifelong consumer. Just like Coke. You start drinking Coca-Cola when you were a kid, you're a lifelong consumer. That is all what they want you. Like if you think about the biggest companies out there, Coca-Cola, General Mills, Big Pharma, The reason why they're so successful is because they're sharing lies that make you a lifelong consumer. You guys, what we're being taught is wrong. Okay, I'm done. We're on fire today. I got shushed. You said. You shushed me. I know. We both <laughs> shushed each other. You said. <laughs> we're, we're passionate today. We're passionate today. I really hope that you guys will share this episode with here's your friends a, and family members. Here's the thing. I think way, way back when, like I imagine, you know, you got the loincloth and the fucking dagger and you're chasing a, a gazelle or something or whatever you're trying to catch to eat, right? The only reason you will become overweight is if maybe, I'm just trying to think of the scenario, if I try to put myself not even in the shoes of, because they didn't have shoes. Um, But if I'm trying to put myself in that position, I'm trying to think, what's the only reason I went, is if I'm, if I'm, um, uh, you know, breastfeeding a a newborn baby and, you know, my body's not in a position or a shape to go out and to chase the food, right? So that's where these, like, um, the kind of gender roles that society has right now, 
came from like the, the guys go and they go get the food and the women take care of the babies. Why? Because a dude can't breastfeed a baby. Okay. So anyways, that aside, the only reason I would say is if you're in that position or if you are elderly and your body has been worn down, right? You're no longer as fast as you used to be. Um, but even then it's like, you can only catch so much food that it is like nearly impossible to become overweight if you are eating real food, not too much, mostly plants. Almost impossible. I'm gonna say there's always freak situations, but it is nearly impossible to become overweight and unhealthy if you are eating real food, not too much, mostly plants, okay? Now, we stopped chasing everything. We stop chasing food. We stop chasing our dreams. We stop chasing money because people say you're greedy. I have a lot of respect. I want to make a lot of money and I have my own reasons for that. And I have a lot of respect for people who do because I know what it takes. I'm not talking about money's dropped into your lap because you got lucky and you won the lottery because you're going to lose it quick and go bankrupt anyways. If you didn't, if you didn't earn it, you won't keep it. If you didn't earn your body, you're not going to keep it. For, for all of those who have had a weight loss surgery, like my love to you, because um, you know I've been in a position where I'm like, oh, maybe I should just have this taken out of me, right? And, and you know, for some reasons it's medical and, and needs to be done. But you know, for um, other reasons, it's like, if you don't earn it, you will not keep it. Because when you earn something, there's so much more that goes into that. There's habits, there's failures and learning experiences, there's, um, there's different decisions that you make, there's different ways you talk to yourself, there's different uh, things you listen to and watch and consume and how you rearrange your schedule and all of these things give you the opportunity to earn the thing that you want. I'm all about making a shit ton of money if you can, because why not? Are you gonna be mad if you made a couple hundred million dollars? What I have a problem with is the people who wanna make all that money by damaging other people. That is the Coca-Colas, that is the General Mills. That is the, um, the um, uh, Kellogg's, whatever. You're making a lot of money and you're damaging fucking human beings. You are killing people. Granted, we all make our own decisions, so it's your choice to go buy the soda and consume it. It's your choice. But they put science and people, they pay people to figure out how can we make you addicted to this so that you want to come back for more and you feel dependent on it and you can't live without it. That's fucked up. But if you're helping people, then you deserve to make a lot of money. Then shame on you if you're not, because, if you're not getting that money. Because if you're helping people, they're excited to give you their money. You guys, when we make a merchandise drop, you put the little gifts and emojis where you're like, take my money, take it all of it. When we come out with a new program, you're like, what is this? Please, let me start saving now. Let me take it. Why? Because everything that we do helps you. Thank you for the love. I don't know, I don't know who's doing all the things, but thank you. And, you know, it's like... If you are contributing positively to society, you don't get to make a lot of money unless you are like making a huge positive impact and solving some kind of people's problems or you're damaging them. Fuck them. Without money, we, we, we won't we won't have been able to get a hold of you guys. Without money, we won't be able to, you know, like deliver to you guys 
all the programs that we deliver to you. Without money, we wouldn't be able to pay ourselves and our team members. Money is important. But one thing that you said is that I feel like society is chasing one thing in this day and age. And this is the biggest. Yeah, just hold on. They're chasing money without knowing why. We live in an economical world. So we all need money. So we go to school, we get a job, but we're, we never take the time to ask ourselves, what kind of life do I want to live? How much does that life cost? What do I want to do with my life so that everything makes sense? But instead of that, we're, we're, you know, we're being listened to what, what the government tells us. Go to school, get a degree, get a job. Most of these jobs are going to be replaced by artificial intelligence within less than 30 years, by the way. Rather than like learn how to rather manage. Rather than take your time to learn how to take care of yourself, to make your body your very first asset. If this is not an asset, then your life is a liability. I will tell you that. Which means that everything else that will come in your life will be a, li- a liability. Because wherever you go, there you are. And this is why you investing in yourself to learn how to take care of yourself is the most important thing. Because you know what? When you do that, you gain confidence to know that anything is fucking possible. Anything. Who's doing the, who's doing the, the mad faces? Are you guys mad at us or society? I would love to know. Yeah, who's doing the mad faces? But, but here's the thing. You got to take the time to figure out, okay... What, what is my ultimate life look like? How much money do I need to create my ultimate life? What do I need to do in order to get there? Instead, we're just, um, news, uh, this happened today, that happened today, listen to this bad news, listen to that bad news, go to this job that you hate. I ain't got time to work out. I ain't got time to sleep. I'm so fucking stressed out. All I do is binge eat and, and just like on medication. This is how most of society lives simply because of that gap. If you chase money, you, you should, but chase it with a purpose. We're chasing money. Why? Because We can't make a big impact without money. We can't get a hold of more people. There's 8 billion people on this planet. How the heck are we going to get our message across to 8 billion people? If we ain't got resources and and tools and incredible people to help us along that. Imagine if you sold a protein shake for $1 to every person on all 8 billion people, you would have $8 billion and you would have helped 8 billion people. But one time is Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> so, you know, um, I saw Hillary King say, you guys should do a nutrition podcast. For one, we do have a podcast. If you guys don't know about it, it's called Espresso with Aaron and Sari. Go ahead and subscribe do us a favor and leave a review. Now our podcast, yes, we talk about nutrition, but we talk about more than just nutrition. This is just life. I want to know who's hitting the mad thing. Like show up. Like don't, don't be, don't be a coward. And I would love to know what are they mad about? Yeah. Like what are you upset about? Let's talk about it. Communication is gold. Let's go. Let's roll. It's got to believe it is being mad about how society would like us to live, I would hope. Yeah, I would hope so too. You guys, it's, it's sad, but it's the truth. <clears throat> it's the truth. Don't matter. And this is the importance of this community, you guys. If you're, I'm, I'm, I'm going to like preach into this right now. Hold up, hold up. Wait a minute. Go tell all your friends how mad you are at us. Go tell them all. And the reason why I ask, why are you mad? And who is it? 
is because if you can't say who you are and you're hitting the mad emoji over and over and over and over, you're probably offended because the truth hurts. Mm -hmm. But the problem is you can't just be mad on the internet and then hide. Because if you want things to change, then you gotta speak up about it. If nobody knows who you are, you can't change what you're upset with. Mm. Last night on the Inner Circle call, we talked about the power of accountability. I, I don't think that they understand what group they're in right now. <laughs> There's an army in here and they'll eat you alive. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they're mad about what society is. It, it has <clears throat> could, been could very could well be. be, but I would imagine they would have made a comment by now because of that. Yeah. So anyways, you guys, we love you dearly. Even if you are upset with what we have to say, I truly, honestly, genuinely, in the deepest part of my heart, want the best for you. I want you to find happiness, whatever that means. I hope that today you can turn your mad emoji into a happy emoji. Maybe that's not with us and that's okay, but I really hope it happens for you because life is sweeter when you have a good attitude. So no matter what, every single one of you guys watching, listening, thank you for being here. And I, I genuinely hope you find your source of happiness today. That's all I have to say. Yeah, and you guys, if, if you found value in today's conversation, this conversation is going to piss off a lot of people. Because maybe I feel like a lot of people would agree at this point. Like at this the people who are, who are ready to change or have already working on improving their life are like, this is gold, you know? And if you feel like this is gold, please share it. If you're like, I'm so mad, um, or whatever, then keep sharing it. As Grant says, like, um, love and hate is the same thing. Hate is just a, a perverted version of love. Um, so whether you're, you know, if, if you're mad at us, then you know what? It is what it is. We know by the end of the day that we're speaking the truth because it is our duty and obligation to share it with those who are seeking to make a positive difference in their own life and in the lives and in, 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 in their communities. This is why we show up every single day. And by the way, Fran, was it really you? I'm trying to see if I can see on here. And, and, um, I want... There's one person. Ah, okay. V? Is that how you say your name? You didn't know Facebook would tell me, did you? V Glod? Glody? Glo, Glo, how do you say that? Oh, and you you requested to be my friend. Interesting. Huh. We'll see. Who knows? Maybe that person is mad about what society is telling. But if if I hope so. But either way, either I'm way. Mad too. Um, man, I had a message I wanted to share. Oh, speaking about impact, because we're talking about impact. <sighs> we're on a mission to make a massive impact. And we understand that with making an impact, you also get criticized a lot. The bigger impact you make, the more criti criticism you get as well. That just, it, it just comes with it. Um, and we're totally okay with it because we know that by the end of the day, we go to sleep with a full heart because we've spoken the truth. Whether it pissed you off or it set you free, um, we hope that it made you better. But all we can do is our best. And then all you'll have to do is your best. So that being said, we hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day. We hope that you add something positive to at least one person um, in your life today. If, if you do that, then man, that is such a gift. Um, we're grateful for you guys. We love you guys so much. Um, if you don't know this by now, we are on a mission to transform the lives of millions 
through the same movement, nutrition, lifestyle, and financial habits that have transformed ours. So we'll continue spreading the truth um, because we believe that it is our duty and obligation and shame on us if we don't do so. That being said, you guys, we hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day and we will catch you tomorrow. See you guys. Bye. Have a great day.